Hello and welcome to Tip Ticks, where I, Ashley, will guide you through some of the most useful PowerPoint tips and tricks that I've found in over my decade career as a PowerPoint presentation designer. Today we will be having a titillating time with text boxes, and I can tell you're excited, so let's get started. Looking at this slide, both boxes look pretty much the same, dark blue background with white text on it. But if I select the one on the left, you can see that it's actually made up of two elements, the dark blue box and a text box over top. If I click on one element and move it, the other one gets left behind and vice versa. Now, if I want these two elements to move together, I select both of them, I right click, group, and now the two elements move as one. Now for the box on the right, if I click it and move it, everything already moves around together because it is in fact just a single element. But now what if I wanna resize these boxes? For the one on the left, you can see as I drag horizontally, that the text box inside of the shape gets stretched, giving it wider margins as I pull it along. If I stretch it vertically, the same thing happens. The distance between the text at the top and the bottom changes. Now for the box on the right, it looks similar as I stretch horizontally, the text moves around to fill the space. But when I let go, the box actually shrinks. So let's see what happens when I stretch it vertically. I can't. It bounces back to whatever the size of the text is. So if I want this box to be taller, that's not gonna happen. So let's see what's going on here and let's see how to fix it. Once again, we have two boxes on the screen that look pretty much the same. The one on the right is the same as the one on the previous slide. So if I go into my format panel, which if you haven't been there, you click on a box, go format shape, format panel appears, and go to the size and properties tab. So under this tab, I can see that this one is set to resize shape to fit text and it has wrap text in shape selected. So let's see what happens when I try to resize it. Once again, we see that the box adjusts. And so when I change the width or the height, it bounces back to whatever the size of the text is. Let's look at the box on the left. This one is set to do not auto fit, but text wrap in shape is selected. So if I make the width smaller than the fit of the text, it spills out over the edge and doesn't automatically adjust. But as I stretch this one vertically, I can adjust the box height without having a return to the text size, which now gives us a lot more options to play with. Now that I can have a bigger text box, I can use the text align dropdown to decide where I want my text to sit on the background. This can be found in the same size and properties tab under text box, or it can be found in the home tab right under here where this little icon is. So on this one, we have top alignment, this one, middle alignment, this one, bottom alignment. So there's the drop down right there or the drop down up here. On this slide, you have additional options but these can only be found in that size and property panel, not the shortcut at the home tab. So this one is top centered. This one is middle centered. And this one is bottom centered. These are especially useful if you have left or right aligned text, but you want it to appear in the middle of the text box rather than off to the left or off to the right side. So let's take this middle centered aligned box and say I want the text more confined in the middle without having to change the overall box size. This is where margin adjustments come in. By adjusting the margins, I can give my text box more or less internal space between the text and the edges. 
For example, maybe I want there to be an inch and a half between the left edge of the box and the text. So if I still want it centered, the margins have to be equal on both sides. There we go, centered in the box. The same thing goes with vertical alignment. So say I feel like my top aligned box is too close to the top of my text. All I have to do is go into the top margin and give it a little bit extra. Since it's not vertically centered, I don't have to make any changes to the bottom margin. So for each of these samples, we've had text wrap turned on. So basically as the text box changes shape, the text adjusts along with it and vice versa. So what happens when we turn text wrap off? The box on the left has do not auto fit selected. So let's turn off wrapping. The text simply runs horizontal and ignores any of the borders of the text box. Now, what about the one on the right? It has resize shape to fit text selected. So if I remove text wrapping for this one, the text box changes shape and stretches with the text. All right, it looks like text wrap is very important and you probably want it turned on most of the time. But of course, there are always exceptions. So I have this cute graphic on the screen, but one of the words clearly does not fit in the circular text box. Now I have several options. I can change the font size, uh, but I do like how legible it is and I don't really like having the two different sizes. So let's undo that. So my other option would be to make this just a regular shape with no text in it and add text over top of it. Then I have two different elements that I have to work with. It's very doable, but I wanna keep this as a text box. So the first thing you wanna do is to set the margins to zero. Clearly not enough. Let's see what happens if I uncheck wrap text and shape. Basically what you're doing is you're asking PowerPoint to override its built-in margins and allow the text to overlap the box edges. If you do change this word to something longer, it'll just go right over the edge of that circle, ignoring the text box completely. But for this situation, it's a very quick, easy way of making it fit. All right, time to recap what we've learned and actually see why it's important to know these things and how useful they can be in a design. First up, auto fit. Selecting resize shape to fit text in the size and properties panel automatically changes the dimensions of the text box to match the length of the text and is especially useful for boxes with backgrounds or colored outlines. Selecting do not auto fit lets you change the size of the text box regardless of the amount of text it contains and gives you more ability to choose where the text is placed within it. By changing the margins of a text box, you can adjust where the text sits within the frame. It's an easy way of keeping a consistent look across matching text fields or to give space for supporting visuals like icons and images. 99% of the time, text wrapping is your friend. But for that 1% of the time where PowerPoint is forcing your text that should fit onto a new line, turning it off can be the easiest and fastest solution. This is especially helpful with text boxes that have curved or angled edges. And lastly, vertical align allows you a variety of default adjustments for where your text sits within a text box. It offers a lot of flexibility for very little effort. So I hope you've had as much of a titillating time with text boxes as I have. Check back soon for more PowerPoint presentation tips and tricks. Hit that like and subscribe button if you want to know when I release the next video like this into the wild or leave a comment below and let me know what you'd like to learn next. Have a good one.